I am within the Evolve ePortfolio tool, which is built on Mahara. And I want to show you um, some more of the functionality of this space. As I've mentioned before, by default, everything that happens in your ePortfolio is visible only to you. So I come across to the left hand side here. Currently, I'm on the dashboard and you can see here I've got three sections. I have a content section, a portfolio section and a group section. Now, if I open the content section, this contains all my own files that I keep within my private space of Mahara. The profile details will have carried through from Moodle. So there's information here that I'd already shared with Moodle and it automatically populates in Mahara too. But I can edit that and change it if I want to. Uh, my profile picture is in there because again, that's carried across. But again, I can change, use another avatar and set that as a default within this space if I want to. Any files that I've chosen to upload will end up within the files area. So in some cases that might be incoming files where perhaps in Moodle I've participated in a forum and I want to push that forum thread into my portfolio so that I can um, reflect upon it. So that will end up in this folder here called incoming. And here you can see I've added a folder about screenshots that I've taken. So again, these are visible by default only to me. The journal area you may already be familiar with. So this is where you can set up a blog or set up um, a diary. Again, visible by default only to me. There are also some additional uh, tools here, so I can even make um, a space here for a CV and create my own resume. I might wish to add my own notes and just add these. These are just private spaces here, all belonging to me. I might want to perhaps use the portfolio as a way of planning my personal development so I can create a plan for my personal development here, again, visible only to me. So that's the sort of thing that I could be doing in a content space. I'm going to close that up again now and go to the next major affordance of a tool such as Mahara, the portfolio area. Now, the portfolio area, if I open that out, gives me a place where I can create a web page and I can even pull multiple web pages together and create something called a collection, a set of web pages. And once I've created a page, I can then define who I want to share it with and show it to. And also, of course, I can export my content if I wish to or import it from another Mahara. So this this area under portfolio is where I'll find those functions. So what is the point of a page? Well, by default within Mahara, automatically you'll have a dashboard page and a profile page. Those are created automatically. But if I want to create a new page like the one I've already shared with you, which is my resources for virtual exchange, I want to show you the steps to do that. It's very simple. I just click add. I decide whether I want several pages or just one page. So I'm going to go for one page here. And I will then give it a title and maybe a short description. And what I'm going to do then is just um, at this point, I'm not going to. Well, here I can define the layout, but at this point, I'm going to go with the default layout. In fact, now I'll go with two, two columns rather than three. But you can see there you've got all sorts of different choices. My page could look like a newspaper, for example, with several columns or it could have several rows with different settings. I could customize a layout, but at any point anyway, I'll be able to change this. So I'm going to save my test page and here is my test page. Oh, you can see here I'm in edit mode. You can see edit is uh, highlighted and you can also see a set down the side here of what are called widgets. These are quick ways of adding content to a page. So, for example, in media, I might choose to add a set of images from my folders. I might choose to add a PDF and embed it within the page.
I might just choose to add a text box and write in that text box. Very good idea just to play with this, have a go, try it out. So I've just created a little text box here and you can see I've put a little bit of text into it. So those were all those possibilities were under the media widget and all I did was literally pick them up and drag and drop them. If I want to perhaps add some of my information that is already in my content area, my profile information, I can just drag and drop it. I can tell it which fields I want it to show. And I can choose which picture I want it to show. I might want to add additional information, but then when I save it, that information is carried through and is visible on my page. But at the moment, this page is visible only to me. I've just created one page of my own. Now, there's plenty to play with here. An experiment, I could add my open badges, um, put those into the page. And what will happen when I add those is it's going to say, OK, which ones would I like to share? You can see here that it's showing it's asking me which badges I'd like to show and share. I might just select a few of these. Let's share one of my Mahara badges. And one of my virtual exchange badges. And just save that. Now I'm still in edit mode here. So let's get to have a look at what this page is going to look like when it's displayed. Still only visible to me, remember. So there's a display view of the page that I've just created. I've not put very much on it, but as you can see, it really wasn't very difficult to add content to it. It's just a matter of knowing which widget does what. And I will create a set of tutorials for the different widgets so that you can quickly decide whether you want um, to try them. I've left comments available on here, but at the moment, this page is visible only to me anyway. <clears throat> OK, so what I'm going to do now on this test page is to change the permissions so that I could show it to someone else. So I'm going to open the shared by me page here. Um, what this will do is to show me all the pages that I currently have. So there's my test page. At the moment, as you can see, it's locked. Now, if I want to edit access, so perhaps somebody that I know on the site, a friend on the site can have a look and we can discuss it. Or maybe I want to show it to the help group. Or maybe I want it to be visible to the general public. This is where I can change those settings. So as it's a test, I'm going to leave it as it is for now. But if I come back, you can see that there are other pages that I've shared and it shows you in the access list who I've shared them with. In this case, the portfolio help group and the public and here just registered users and evolve. So what you can do here is think about permissions, think about what you can create and think about who you wish to see that. So that's a very important digital skill, not only knowing how to manage your presence, but also knowing who you're sharing it with and where. Um, and Mahara is a very useful tool to learn more about that and to think all of those things through very carefully. The final set here, groups. Well, groups functionality is all about finding other people. So far as we've seen, Mahara is a private space to me personally, belongs to me. When I start setting up pages, I start to think about who I want to show or share things with. Groups is at the social end of that spectrum. So what about if I want half a dozen people to get together who I happen to know are already on um, Mahara? 
and on this site's Mahara. Well, from there I can set up a group. It's as simple as clicking create group, giving it a name and deciding who can come, whether they need invitations from me or whether it's an open group and they can just come along if they wish to. I've got a filter here that I can change so I can look at what other groups are around. I can look at groups I'm invited to, for example. And from there, I can uh, decide which groups to join. So the groups functionality means that I can make Mahara a more social space. So if I click on the my friends here, you can see these are all people who are um, on the Mahara platform share it with us and they have um, agreed to be a friend uh, and so I can easily contact them. I can send a message to them. I can perhaps invite them to other groups that I've set up. So if I set up a, a group that is specific to um, Mahara users who have an interest in a particular language maybe or a particular hobby, we can set up a group just for that. So Mahara gives us this opportunity to think about a tool and a set, in fact, of digital tools that allow us to think about our digital presence. Think about it from a personal perspective and having your own domain, having a space of your own that belongs to you. Then think perhaps about how you open that up and how you connect with others and what you show and share to others even maybe um, a prospective employer and how you present yourself, perhaps through um, a portfolio page or through a public collection. And finally, as a way of connecting and having social um, connections with others who are in this space. So it, for students perhaps who are used to just using a virtual learning environment, which is controlled by their tutor, Mahara gives me the opportunity to have more agency online. Um, and that's really important for our digital futures, that we understand what we can do online.